there's so many. There's so many. I don't. Even, I mean, it's hard to even know exactly where to start. I'll give you three things that 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 I did not originate, but that came from uh, my colleague Peter Ackerman, who co-founded the International Center on Nonviolent Conflict. And Peter uh, says there, you need unity, you need planning, and you need nonviolent discipline. And in order to create unity, of course, you need to understand who you need to unite with, understand what they care about, what their grievances are, what their aspirations are. You have to listen to them. One thing that a lot of movements that fail don't do very well is they don't actually listen to the people they want to support them. So they don't know how to talk to them. They don't know how to represent them. And, um, but people need unity. And so frequently opposition's have been divided. And there's a whole there are a lot of skills around creating unity. In addition to listening, you need to be able to inspire confidence that you can achieve something, which means you need strategy. You need to be able to show people that you have a plan that works and in fact prove that it works through incremental steps. So strategy would be the second attribute. Understanding how the vision fits in with broader campaigns and how tactics build into those campaigns and those campaigns all feed into the vision. That's all really, really critical knowledge. What tactic to choose? Why? When? How? Who's going to do it? What happened before it? What, what's going to happen after it? All those things need to be thought through. And then nonviolent discipline for obvious reasons. If you can't remain nonviolent in the face of violent provocation, you're going to end up using violence, which discredits the movement, legitimizes repression by an adversary, and then sets the whole conflict on ground where the adversary has a the advantage, which is violence. I mean, most adversaries have an advantage in violence. Um, in addition, when a movement becomes violent, a lot of participants who normally would join a movement go home. So you lose a lot of support there, too. So unity planning and nonviolent discipline and all the skills that go in to maintaining those and building those, I would say, are valuable.